Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson from Grace in Motion. We are in the Gospel of John and we are almost to the end. We are at John chapter 19. If this is your first time here, I encourage you to take a few minutes to go to gimsimple.net, visit our website and find some of the introductory materials there. There's also a preview lesson that goes before each one of these, I should say a pre-lesson that goes before each one of these lessons that gets you into some other components of some of the fundamentals of our pray, go, baptize, teach model in with grace in motion. But for those of you who are ready to move on, let's go ahead and jump into this lesson. This one is entitled death penalty for an innocent man. It is from John 19, John 19 death penalty for an innocent man. So first thing I would encourage you to do is go ahead and get a Bible or get some app or resource that allows you to read through John 19 together. So it's a lengthy um, passage of scripture, but I do encourage you to take the whole thing together uh, either individually or as a group in context. And then we're going to go into our first couple of questions as we reflect on what we are reading. And the first thing is to just simply notice what we observe and wonder what questions come to our mind. So what do you notice and wonder about this section of scripture? Go ahead and stop the video and discuss that now. All right. Now that you have had that discussion, a couple other questions that we have tried to make somewhat routine now. So by the time you're getting uh, into the rhythm of this, you, these questions should become more natural. What do you learn about people from this passage? What does it tell us about ourselves and about humanity? And then also, what do we learn about Jesus from John 19? Go ahead and pause the video and discuss those questions now. All right, so let's work through some of this together. We have this whole thing kicking off with Pilate ordering Jesus to be flogged. And then soldiers put crown of thorns and, and robe on Jesus and, and hit him. And then we have this uh, interesting um, incident that happens here in the words of Pilate. So Pilate tells the Jews again, look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. I have nothing on him, is what he's saying. Well, the chief priests cry out in response to that, crucify. So Pilate answers them, you know what? You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. There's no evidence. There's no account that I can charge him with here. The Jewish leaders said that he must die according to their law. So let's look at what um, Pilate does here and let's ponder some questions, some thoughts that he presents to us in, in John 19. First of all, looking at a question that he raises to Jesus himself when they're interacting with each other. He asks him, where do you come from? Do you refuse to speak to me? And then he says, don't you realize I have the power to either free you or to crucify you. I have the power to either free you or crucify you. And Jesus answers to him. He replies to him, look, you wouldn't have any power over me if it were not given to you from above. So I have a question as we step back from this scene. We can use this scene as the context, but let's talk um, what is universal here? What is transferable to other settings? And ask yourself this question, how do you know power when you see it? How do you know power when you see it? What is truly the power dynamic at work in different settings? So go ahead and pause the video and have that conversation now. All right, let's continue on and ponder a little bit more as we go through this. So from then on, what we find out is Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jews kept shouting, if you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. So there's a very interesting twist that's occurring here. The Jewish leaders have turned this from a Jewish theological matter to a Roman political matter. And this is really kind of fascinating, fascinating consider, considering the background. So Pilate presents Jesus to them, and he says, here is your king. They respond, take him away, 
crucify him. And Pilate's question to them is, shall I crucify your king? Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests say, get this, this is what they say, we have no king but Caesar. We have no king but Caesar. I mean, this is like, what in the world is happening here? So finally, we have what are some of the dark, very dark words in history. Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So let's think about this whole exchange and what just happened here and step back and, 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 and reflect on this. But basically, first of all, let's summarize what's happening here. In your own words, how would you describe what's happening here? How do you make sense of it? And are there any comparisons to anything today? Political, societal, anything that you can relate to that, that resonates with you and, and, and how this whole scene is unfolding here. So go ahead and pause the video and take time to discuss that now. All right, so continuing on, the soldiers, they take charge of Jesus. He did carry his own cross. Pilate had a sign put on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. It was in Aramaic, it was in Greek, it was in Latin. Now, Jesus' mother and his aunt and Mary Magdalene are all there at the crucifixion. Jesus tells his mother that John is now her son and that tells John that Mary is now his mother. John cared for Mary from then on. And on the cross, we have these famous sayings of Jesus, I am thirsty and it is finished. Verse 30. So we've been talking kind of about the human social interactions that are going on throughout this entire encounter. When we talk about Pilate, we talk about the Jewish leaders and the crowd and so forth. But let's now try to turn our attention to the spiritual implications here, the theological implications of this. Jesus says it is finished while he's on the cross just before he dies. What is finished? What is it? What is finished here? So try to figure out how to have this conversation and then boil this down to its simplest terms in your opinion, from your perspective. What is it he's referring to and what does it mean? Go ahead and pause the video and have that conversation now. All right. Well, thanks so much for participating in this lesson. Uh, what happens in the conclusion of this chapter, Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea got permission to bury Jesus' body. Nicodemus was with him and he anointed Jesus' body and they went through the burial customs. And we have a sad, dark, tragic time in history where it seems as though it is all over. Jesus is dead. Jesus is buried. It is Friday, but Sunday is coming. So to wrap this up, as always, share something that someone else said or did that impacted you during this time. And as always, act with grace and simplify faith. Have a wonderful day.